So one thing that's good to do as your code bases get larger is to try to visualize how your modules kind of depend on other modules. Often you can have too much dependency going on, which can cause coupling. And I want to show you a really cool tool you can use to just help visualize that type of thing. So we got this game here. There's a decent amount of functionality in here. But I found this tool called Dependency Cruiser, right? And I went ahead and just made this command where you can make it traverse your project. And I can include certain folders, right? So in this case, I'm saying, give me the game shared, the game client, and the game server. So I have like different packages in this project just to try to split up the code a little bit. And I basically have it output an SVG file. So if I go over here and just run this, npm run deep cruise from the root directory, you'll see that it outputs a SVG. So let's just go ahead and look at that SVG here. I'm gonna go ahead and just open it, open it in Chrome. And this is what the current project looks like. It's it's a lot of different files, a lot of different classes, and a lot of different entities and whatnot to get this all going. And I want to kind of walk you through why this is important, how you can kind of understand this. So this game is split up into the client, and then we have some shared code, and then we have the server. In the client, we basically have these different entities that run around the map, and those entities have extensions on them, which you can attach to entities to kind of change how they function. So one thing that's important to point out is that the arrows, you notice that they go from no arrow to an arrow. This is the dependency direction. So this client entity depends on index.ts. So if I were to look at client entity, somewhere at the top, you'll see that it's importing index.ts. Okay, and this is good because it can help you understand like which files are depending on other files. And sometimes you have files like this where a bunch of stuff depends on it. And once your components get too much dependencies on them, it can cause issues. For example, refactoring can become harder. If you were to break something in this, that means you're going to break something in all this. All right, so just kind of keep that in mind. So we have the extensions. This is a folder. And inside of that, we have all these files that kind of depend on it. So this one is a barrel export. At one point, I was going to get rid of all the barrel exports because it's kind of hard to know what entities depend on which extensions, right? So if you scroll down a little bit, we have all these different entities. We have like a tree, a bandage, a cloth. And those are for making up what we see in the, the map, right? So this tree here, if you pick it up, you can get it in your inventory. We have like a, a pistol over here. Bullets are different types of entities as well. And so you can see all those here. We have items, we have like environments, so stuff can catch on fire. And a lot of these entities depend on various extensions that you'll see over here. And it's hard to visualize that. So this, this visualization helps me realize that maybe I should not be using like a barrel export file because now it's hard to know like what depends on what extension. So if you keep going down, we got some other managers here. We have like a, a map manager, we have a storage manager and stuff like that. So let's scroll down a little bit to the server because this is where things get a little bit messy, a little bit crazy. Okay. So notice all these orange lines. These are circular dependencies. And what this means is that you have a file that imports some other file and somewhere along the line, it imports the original file that we started off, right? So you see this line, this orange line, there is a circular dependency to entity and somehow entity is going to go all the way back and require this one. So again, this is, I think a, a barrel export. I want to get away from those because I've been doing some research. It just makes things a little bit harder to uh, get rid of circular dependencies with that. So anyway, as you can see, this game server has a ton of circular dependencies and I need to go through and actually fix these because it makes, sometimes the code just breaks. If you have a TypeScript file that's importing another TypeScript file that references back the original, Sometimes TypeScript just won't even compile. Like your code just won't work. Um, I was getting issues with some of my unit tests just failing, uh, randomly failing because I was trying to initialize a constructor, but the constructor was like undefined for some reason. And I have a whole live stream I was trying to debug that on. And so when you get circular dependencies, what you end up having to do is split up your classes or your exports into smaller different files so that you don't have as many things like loading in the same file. So from a high level glance, I mean, it's definitely looking like entity.js is everything depends on this thing. This is like a, uh, an abstract class, I believe. And so everything kind of extends the entity, but for some reason, every other place in the code base seems to point to entity and then entities, including entity manager, which if I find the entity manager, here it is. That thing is including all of these entities and those depend on the entity class. So it's just like a giant circle dependency. Luckily the game works, everything compiles and runs, but I don't really like how this is set up. There are things you can do to your code to like invert the dependencies. It's called dependency inversion. And there's different mechanisms or patterns such as dependency injection you can apply to your code base 
so that certain things don't actually need to import files. Instead, you can pass them into the constructor so that they won't even know about it. Secondly, you can create interfaces. So for example, we have this entity manager. If I were to load that up, this is like a giant thing that manages all the different game objects in, in the world. And it turns out that if you look at something like the player, the player has to interact with the entity manager to do different things, such as like create new bullets, um, look up what are nearby, like something like that. So I've kind of reached a point in this project where it's getting a little bit too out of hand and I need to spend time just refactoring stuff to remove these circular dependencies. So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. Maybe I'll make more videos about this update if I get some progress. But um, yeah, I just want to point that out. I think it's a really cool library. It is called Dependency Cruiser. Dependency Cruiser. I mean, it's a pretty popular tool, it seems. But it's it's nice if you just want to focus on something simple like, um, let me show you this. This will be kind of important. Let's say I want to focus more on entity manager and maybe like entities. So I'm going to go back to that package JSON and I'm going to say we want entity manager and then we want um, entities like this. If I go ahead and just like run this again, that'll recreate that SVG and then I get a smaller view. And so I can try to break down my system into smaller uh, subsets of functionality, which will help me understand like, okay, how do I get rid of these circular dependencies? Because right now entity manager depends on these entities and somehow these end up depending on entity manager itself. So I could try to focus on fixing that first and then zoom out and fix like more things. I'll probably add in extensions as well. Those are probably important to figure out because there's a lot of dependencies, circular dependencies going on there. I don't know what that red line is saying. Not too unresolvable. Okay. Um, but anyway, so to use dependency cruiser, there is a CJS file I have, and this is where you can define all of the different things that you want it to kind of highlight when it creates that SVG. So like some of them are forbidden. If you want to make sure that you get those orange lines, you can say, I don't want any circular dependencies. Go ahead and warn me if I have any, and that'll make it orange. Let's see what the red one is, not too unresolvable. Let's see if I have that one, not too unresolvable. Okay, this one's a severity error. And I think this is just happening because like I didn't actually add the things that it's depending on. But by the way, this this file, when you do a dependency cruiser init, which is here, that'll create that file for you. It kind of analyzes your code base, which is pretty nice. And yeah, that's kind of all you have to do. And you kind of read through this. There's a lot of functionality you can do with this to try to understand your code base a little bit better. Uh, but definitely check it out. Um, this is probably more useful, not for web development projects, but like for a game, definitely important because you have all these things that are depending on other things. And at some point you have too much coupling and it can make the system very hard to extend, to refactor. And these are things you need to be thinking about every time you add a new component or a new class. You want to keep things as decoupled as possible, but at the same time, not making your system so abstract and decoupled that you can't even like trace the code base. So hopefully that was a useful uh, overview. Have a good day. Happy coding.